Hello, I'm Dr. Dave Vaughn from Plant a Million Corals, and I'm going to be giving you a presentation on new technologies for land based systems. I'm going to share my screen and give you a PowerPoint. There has been a lot of new advances in, in land-based systems. Most systems have started with uh, the typical types of three stages of marine aquaculture, a hatchery and nursery and grow out. The nursery can be land-based or field-based. And most systems started with staghorn coral with a field nursery directly to grow out planting. I'm gonna tell you about adding a land nursery and some of the benefits since it has a lot of potentials and new technologies. Fragmentation and microfragmentation and reskinning are all part of what can be done easily on land. Although it can be done also in the field, um, it's easier done on land. Microfragmentation, you can make many more uh, small pieces of coral that not only give you more coral in number, but it stimulates them to grow faster. And this is easier done on land and on a table and uh, in more controlled conditions. Land nurseries also can be the recipient of post-settlement from sexual reproduction from a hatchery. And this can increase genetic diversity by growing those new recruits up to a large enough size to make more and then placing them out into a field nursery or to final planting. When you do a, uh, land-based system and use microfragmentation, you can produce as little or as many in one day as uh, similar to a thousand corals. And they stimulate them in the center picture to uh, grow very fast. And in fact, we found out the hard way by not having enough tanks fast enough that they grow together and refuse instead of fighting. And this is because they're from the same clone known now as refusion. We can use this refusion or uh, portion or as reskinning in a land nursery. And it's been done in the field as well. Here's a picture of one that we did on land with a piece of Portland concrete. And just one year later in the center picture, they grew together and fused. We can potentially do this on land and bigger scale by utilizing small pieces of uh, coral uh, re receiver heads and by placing the corals on them. Some of the big benefits now that is taking place is that we're placing, and many of them are, are placing round plugs, but putting them in square tanks that are opaque. New technologies throws a curve into the mix by using acrylic to literally make a curved tank, as you see on the bottom, and takes less aeration and it also allows you to see the corals at all times and can collect some of the sediments all on one side. So how do you scale up? Well, if you put plugs on a tray that's about one foot square, you can get 77 per tray or about a thousand in a tank. You take and just use the stems only and you can have 160 in a tray and almost 2000 in a tank. You put the stems close together in that same tray and you can get 3,800 new microfragments. And by placing those stems, you can make yourself a potential fusion. So we're looking at ways to make more corals faster, better materials. Uh, we've been using some new technologies of 3D printing a few years ago and, and new base cements that actually absorb CO2 and not made out of Portland cement. They can be made into many shapes and sizes and can help and assist in doing that on a basis on land. So coral restoration on land is not only accessible all the time, but it in all kinds of conditions. We're not limited by diving, scuba diving, holding your breath, or the type of waves and winds conditions or visibility that's out there. It's available also to motivated local citizen scientists or volunteers and can be used without a vessel. We can also make these as new solar power units. As these coral restoration units, we've been making that that actually uh, can be made on land, put together, and then taken apart and put inside a shipping container with all of the engineering done. 
on day one, you could be arriving and setting up, and by day two, running water and making corals. This is not just a, some good ideas and some new improvements, but these are some ways that you can add hope with new land nursery technologies, as opposed to thinking that it costs millions of dollars in places like you might have seen in universities or agencies or research institutions, land nurseries can be cost effective and produce large numbers of corals on, on land in very little space and at scale. With being able to have one tank, the size of a small dinner table, hold 1000 corals, it's like having the same as 10 underwater coral trees. So with just uh, six to a dozen tanks, you can be producing 10,000 to 20,000 corals for field out planting or even to be supplying field nurseries in, in very little time with just a few labor people. So we're going to uh, finish up by saying that uh, uh, all coral aquaculture for restoration does not have to be field nurseries and to grow out. It can be land nurseries or with new technologies being developed on land can supplement and provide large numbers of corals through some of these uh, technologies uh, to field nurseries and finally to coral restoration. Thank you. I'll entertain some questions.